Welcome back friends to yet another episode of SAF podcast and today we'll be continuing with our exciting series on natural theology and trust me it's going to be as good as the previous episode well as we dive in i just want to uh, give you a situation think that uh, you are inside a court room and uh, people are giving all sorts of fall Uh, false uh, you know allegations and uh, evidences that you have done some criminal acts but you haven't keep yourself in that situation as we get back well 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 hey jacob uh, welcome once again after two weeks in yet another podcast yeah. and uh, yeah so there's not much to you know like uh, talk about uh like what's happening around because it's all the same staying back at home mm. and uh, not yeah. going out etc etc but then uh, you know just trying to But find your your yeah your college I, has started right back online yes i'm having online classes but uh, it's the same like staying at home only <laughs> <laughs> can't go out uh that's what you know we we want to tell you guys yeah, as well yeah. that stay back home stay safe and uh, yeah. okay so let's move ahead and um, before yeah before going into our uh, like what we have in store today i want to tell you about something exciting which we have for you guys as we look into this series you people can ask us questions and we will feature them on our podcast and for that uh, we have an account uh, on our website uh, and the link is speakpipe.com forward slash saft podcast so when you go there what you can do is you can record an audio message with your question and we will be featuring that on our podcast so that's exciting right and uh, if you yeah, are and, a bit and uh, we'll, we'll be dropping that in the description so no one need not worry to figure that out and uh, please like i said uh, the best part that i like about us being able to do that is not only that we'll be having audience question i mean you know that we get a, a lot of emails to our emails uh, yes some people asking questions uh, like people reach out on instagram there are people who would have a bone to pick with what we spoke about or a topic that we spoke on uh, but this time you know it's super excited that they can send in their questions and we can uh, talk about those questions and the audience will be hearing their voice so it's not going to be yeah. us reading it out they'll be hearing their 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 own voice and also the most exciting part is that you know as we cover these arguments for god's existence um and when we cover one we are hoping to bring on a subject expert on that argument to sort of uh, wrap up that particular argument so then in that yes. case if we find that there are certain really good question pertaining to a particular topic or an argument you know when we have that guest on this world renowned speaker on we could field this question to the speaker and that is going to be uh, really exciting for the for the guest as well as well as for our audience so uh, check out the link in the description like peach said speakpipe.com forward slash saft podcast um and you know it would be really great if you could mention your name and your country at the beginning when you start a question you have 90 seconds to ask the question um and we and we i know that most of you may not be that inclined to mention your name and your country but yeah. as you know we are heard across 59 countries around the world so it's it would be pretty cool for us to know that we have a question coming in from a nation where we have no friends or no contacts so we would actually love to hear um you know you point out which country you're part of in addition to your name so yeah really looking forward to it and you can start sending it you know right now as you listen to this podcast yeah definitely and uh, i'm sure that there are a lot of you who want to uh, you know send in your questions and uh, hear yourself uh, as we put it in uh, the next the upcoming episodes and uh, okay let's let's just straight uh, dive into the topic for today and uh, in the beginning mm. i asked you to think about a situation right so talking about that uh, let me just remind you once again what the situation was imagine that you are a person who has no criminal background nothing totally an innocent person uh, just like jacob and myself we don't have any criminal backgrounds so yeah two nice uh, boys but then yes <laughs> so so basically you are in a court room and there are people coming in coming up with all kinds of evidence uh, obviously there are false evidence and allegations uh, against you that you have committed an act of uh, which a criminal would normally do and they are uh, calling you a criminal and uh, asking the court to pass a judgment 
so what do you do in that situation what are the what is the thought process which you have during that situation i think uh, jacob it's time you can help us know more about it yeah yeah and uh, this actually connects with what we spoke in the last episode in the last episode we talked about um, knowing christianity to be true, to be true and how we can know that and we talked about uh, the self authenticating inner witness of the holy spirit and towards the end of that episode we uh, we we mentioned uh, this phrase properly basic belief and what yes. it can mean for us in the in the sense of there is no arguments for god's existence and so this scenario that you put up there that is that's sort of like a nightmare right i mean you're standing in front of the court uh, your friends and families get to hear about this that you are you know you're pulled up in court and there is a criminal allegation against you i mean imagine something like you know we are taken to the court and uh, the allegation is that we are part of the punjab bank scam like thousands of crores uh worth of scam that we are part of it would be an absolute nightmare like we would be wondering like is this a dream is, is this really happening like how how can this be the case um and so that is actually an an absolute nightmare and so this is where uh, like we said keep that in mind because this is where a properly basic belief comes in and uh, i want to mention a particular name here alvin planninga uh, you may be familiar with the name alvin planninga because yeah. i told you quite a lot about him um Uh, so uh, to the audience who may not be familiar with this legend of philosophy of christian philosophy uh, most of us are familiar with the free will defense so when someone comes with the problem of evil we would point out and say god had to allow free will and if there is to be free will then we humans will have the ability to do the right thing and the wrong thing and so it as since and since love can only be there when there is freedom of choice it's only when we can freely love that will there be true love that god allowed free will to happen and as a as a ramification it follows that we will have the ability to do the right thing and the wrong thing therefore we explain the evil and why god allows evil it's to enable us to be able to love and so this free will defense was formulated by alvin planninga so uh, it was like the knocked down argument against the logical problem of evil which uh, one of the renowned experts on the logical problem of evil dr clay jones spoke on about in our podcast a while back i'll be i'll be linking that in the description yeah. as well and so uh, planning it uh present that belief in god could be properly basic in other words your belief in god could be a foundational knowledge in that it could be self evident and he uses the word incorrigible um i may be mispronouncing it but self evident you know as as the word itself says it's evident it's evident on its own it's self evident mm. and incorrigible mm. would mean as uh, the dictionary definition is that something that can't be changed why right. so i think it's they are using it in the sense of something that can be challenged or something that is so obvious that you can't change it of that sort so uh so what they say is that so we can use, we can use this example for instance um our realization that the 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 past that we know of the memory that we have or the past that we all uh, speak of is actually real i mean no one suggests something like that we began to exist 5 minutes ago with the memory of the past with the memory of all the experience and with the food in our belly yeah. suddenly like no one even presents something like that and there is no argument for it there is no argument to counter it uh, but we are all justified in believing that 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 is not the case so that sort of a belief that our past is not 5 minutes old and that we don't have the appearance of age that sort of a belief is what would come under as a properly basic belief because it is sort of a foundational form of knowledge now we're getting into deep philosophy so i'm going to try and uh chop it down bite size it as much as possible but there are certain terminologies that we can't water it down too much it will be deviated from its meaning and uh, right. planning a comes along and suggests that you know something like that something that could serve as deeply foundational something that is very properly basic as self evident uh could also be our belief in god and that is where the notion like i said of a properly basic belief is connected into what we are talking about and he then goes on to say that you know our belief in god could be properly basic under certain specific circumstances and under those specific circumstances it could be a circumstance of feeling gratitude a circumstance of feeling guilt a circumstance of direct encounter with god that we can come to hold properly as a basic belief a foundational knowledge that god exists and you know we in the last episode we talked about sri gan srinivasan's encounter with god uh, at 
you know 8:30 pm that day and about yeah. my experience at 12:45 in the middle of the night so under those specific circumstances it's not a random circumstance it's 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 under, it's under that specific circumstance that what we experience turn out to be a properly basic belief and mm-hmm. uh, so planting a ghost on to say that belief in god can be a properly basic belief and another example of a properly basic belief would be something like um me f- us feeling pain so it is it is sort of self evident like even if i am thinking about or hallucinating about feeling pain that hallucination is also is also properly basic it's it's a f- foundational fundamental uh, knowledge that i am possessing at that point so uh, in that same sense planting a goes on to present that our belief in god could also be a properly basic belief and he mentions this part of you know it it is a properly basic belief under specific circumstances to avoid someone saying that you know any belief is properly basic like any yeah. belief is foundational any belief could fit into the category of being you know self evident and incorrigible so he says that under specific circumstances that belief could be a properly basic belief and he also uses the example of um, us seeing a tree our natural perception so we have the capacity to perceive uh something like us seeing a tree and he points out that our inner man our uh, uh, spiritual man and this is connected to what what john calvin of calvinism is also saying that our spiritual man is capable to encounter god our spiritual man is capable to perceive god just like we have the natural capacity to perceive um a tree in the field so just as us seeing a tree can become a properly basic belief our belief in god can also in the same sense be a properly basic belief so his whole point is that uh, our belief in god can in that sense be a properly basic belief now this is not a, this is not something that is not left unchallenged obviously people are going to object because yeah. what this would mean is that a uh, belief in god is somewhat self evident that you don't need an evidential argumentation to show that god exists or that um, our belief in god is proper knowledge so this is something that is that is definitely contested um like i said i'm we're getting into you know deep philosophical territory and i'm trying my best to present it as much as possible i may i may not be doing a great job at that uh, but peesh what, what are your thoughts on what we have covered so far no i think you're doing a great job because uh, even like for me personally it's you have explained it in a pretty good manner and it's very easy to understand and uh, I, like you know when you were talking about this again i was taken back to the illustration which we used in the previous episode about a small baby crying so uh, let me just tell you like for example this this small baby again i'll talk about it this this small baby and he or she is having a pain somewhere in her body but she's not able to express because he or she cannot talk and uh, the parents and the people around they're wondering what's happening why is this person crying and they're not able to understand they're thinking that maybe this person is just you know trying to create a nuisance or something but uh, only the child knows that what pain the child is facing no matter what the people mm-hmm. around say the baby believes and uh, is giving a reaction to the fact that he or she has a pain in a body right and uh, Uh, yeah like jacob you mentioned about uh, you know like what if tomorrow someone comes and uh, says that the arguments are flawed right so hmm. does this mean that this will stand against the existence of god yeah and so this is actually this actually uh, very neatly ties into what we are connect so we are actually slowly exploring what all connects with the notion of a properly basic belief in god we are, we are taking a s- slow stroll down the woods and yeah. uh, so the idea is that can our properly basic belief that our belief in god that god exists can that be defeated can we bring what is used in philosophy a defeater of that belief a defeater of that knowledge if you may and uh, planting a goes on to use the example that um, if something like uh, and and i also would point out in the same way if something like uh, an argument against the existence of god for example Uh, like i mentioned the logical problem of evil if that could be advanced against god's existence then our properly basic belief uh, now has a defeater present so let's let's break that down bit by bit uh, so first of all uh, the logical problem of evil 
what the logical problem of evil basically states is that uh, god can't be uh, all loving all knowing and all powerful specifically all loving and all powerful if there is evil in the world and so they point out and say well there is evil in the world so how can god be both all loving and all powerful because if he is all powerful then he will intervene and stop all the evil and if he is all loving then he won't allow evil to happen like he won't want evil to happen so we would mm-hmm. have to give up either one of those so we would have to say you know god is all loving he wants to stop evil but he can't stop evil so he is not all powerful or we would have to say uh god can stop all evil but he doesn't want to stop all evil so then he is not all loving and so the logical problem of evil basically said that you can't hold on to a god who is all loving and all powerful if there is evil in the world there is evil in the world so therefore you cannot hold on to a god who is all loving and all powerful so if this holds right this argument holds true then this is an argument against specifically clearly against um the existence of an all powerful all loving god and here yeah. like i said when planning came along and presented his free will defense saying that god can be all loving and all powerful and he could still have morally justified reasons for allowing evil you know you can explain all of that together you can hold the fact that there is evil in the world you can hold the fact that god is all powerful you can hold the fact that he is all loving you can bring it all together through something like the free will defense and pointing out that god could have uh morally justified reasons for allowing this evil and still being loving and still retaining the capacity to uh, the ability to stop all sort of evil and you know in that sense be all powerful and so we had what looked like a defeater of our belief in god in the specific form of an argument against god's existence and the free will defense came in and you know neutralized the logical problem of evil which is why uh, dr clay jones mentioned in our episode that i think he um uh, he cited michael row uh, a atheist philosopher who said that the logical problem of evil is no longer a problem for the theist because free will defense mm-hmm. neutralizes it it's no longer right. a legitimate problem for christianity i still see our atheist friends bring that up uh, but it is in the philosophical atheist academy uh, academia it is no longer held as a viable tenable legitimate argument against god's existence so yeah. that would be the case so like if someone would have to challenge or if i were to find a defeater for my belief then god exists that properly basic belief i would need something specific as that but you were asking about uh, what if we f- one day realize that the kalam cosmological yeah. argument is flawed maybe there maybe one of the premises falls or the logic doesn't hold or what if that happens for the moral argument or the fine tuning argument so here what what something that i uh, starkly re- realized Uh, from the works of dr craig is that if one day we realize that these arguments don't hold it doesn't follow that therefore god doesn't exist all it follows is that these arguments can't be used to prove god's existence why because these are flawed arguments and let me let me clarify that yeah. with an example and then please you can interject and let me know if that makes sense uh um, mm-hmm. and i'm just going to quick up, think of a quick analogy to sort of explain what's happening let's yeah. think about the uh, rt pcr test i mean it's sort of like a household name pcr <laughs> testing now so we yeah. have the pcr test and the uh, what is it called i think it's called the antibody test is that the name for the other one uh, i'm not sure yeah so let's 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 call it the antibody test i i think it's the antibody test so it's test okay. about your presence of covid in the body um, in mm-hmm. the sense as in um, was covid sometime there in your body and also Uh, p- people don't actually rely on the antibody test much because it is not as accurate or as in depth as the pcr test and if you've taken the vaccine also uh, it said that the antibody test will show you that you are covid positive you know because you yeah, have the trace of the uh, the virus mm-hmm. all of that yeah so uh, let's say that we are all using the pcr test i mean so i'm i'm sitting down okay let's assume that i'm a frontline worker um, and i'm sitting down to take a, a person's pcr test and um, i take the pcr test i you know i put in the swab and i'm about to put it into the into the glass vial and a person comes in and says hey we just got a new information from the world health organization a new research has found that pcr tests don't actually show us whether you have covid or not the test has a deep flaw in it um it's a deeply flawed test so you know there's no point in using it because it doesn't show you whether there is covid or not so at that point now i have the pcr test uh, ready to go i don't say to the person look at that 
you don't you no longer have covid <laughs> i can't say that the right. only thing i can say to him is that okay i can't use a pcr test to see whether you have covid or not so i will drop that test down and maybe i will go for the antibody test that's mm-hmm. the thing so even if he get some sort of result positive or negative result and i find out the pcr test is flawed the pcr test is not reliable i can't directly say that therefore that person doesn't have covid or that therefore that person has covid in any way all that would show me is that the pcr test is not the right test to know whether they have covid or not i will have to use some other test so in the same way if the kalam cosmological argument is proved false it doesn't tell us that the universe therefore doesn't have a cause all that would tell us is that we can't use this argument to probe the question of whether the universe has a cause there could be some other argument that will show us that the universe has a cause maybe yeah. something like uh, uh, the argument from contingency which would go on to show that you know there are things that necessarily exist and there are things that ex- depend on something else for existence now we'll be breaking it down down the line when we look at arguments and we could yes. look at that and point out to say that you know the universe does not necessarily exist it is something that could have existed and could not have existed therefore its existence is dependent on something else and therefore we can point towards a first cause or yeah. uh, or the argument for first cause as put forward by aquinas um, if i recall right uh, where he points towards infinite regress and say that there must be a first cause so in that same way you know we could use different arguments to try and show that the universe has a first cause and we have mentioned yes. about this in the podcast when cameron bertersi on on a show had a presentation of more than 100 arguments there were many arguments mm-hmm. under the a uh, cosmological argument pointing towards a cause behind the universe so all of this yeah. would show that if there has to be a defeater for my belief in god which platting argues is a properly basic belief a belief that does not need any evidence now that's a key part a properly basic belief is a belief that is like i said self evident or incorrigible and by that reason it doesn't need any particular evidence to show that it is true or that you can hold that belief um and so in that case to defeat that sort of a properly basic belief what i need is not just one argument to be flawed i would need a specific argument that would actually come in and counter what i'm believing so like i said yeah. uh, an argument like the logical problem of evil that would come along and say hey if this is the case and this is the case then god cannot exist or the god that you believe in cannot cannot exist we would need something like that and you've seen that the logical problem of evil has been dealt with so that is what would be uh what we would have to see or what has to be presented forward um uh, for something like our properly basic belief in god to be rejected yeah i think so that, that example sense? was yeah i think that example was very uh, well put and uh, it really made sense and uh, just to add to it like uh, why does a person take the rt pcr test i know like most of the times it's like nowadays it's because like you know before traveling and stuff you have to check but yeah. uh, a person goes for the rt pcr test because uh, when he sees the symptoms of covid in his body right so when he has that feeling that he he experiences the uh, that the virus may be there inside his body so that is a belief and uh, similarly like uh, i know jacob already connected it pretty well with uh, this question which may arise so i'll just add like the way this person knows that he has covid virus inside him like maybe he has covid virus inside him similarly like uh, we already like before taking the test before uh, talking about the arguments we already know that god exists why because we have the inner witness of the holy spirit and that's what we spoke about in the last episode and uh, that's how we know that christianity is true now uh, last week yeah, you, uh, yeah. you know when when we started off you talked about this example of a person in in a court yeah. and uh, i think that would, that is sort of like the last piece to connect uh, mm. with the properly basic belief and so the example that you talked about is um, you know we're standing in court and someone comes along and says um, hey uh, not someone comes along let's assume that the entire prosecution yes. the cbi the uh, intelligence bureau and the economics department they're all uh, why why did i say economics department sounded like some college <laughs> professors are there in the court Um, i was thinking about the uh, the uh, the economic wing of different uh, forces you know who would look at economic crimes and all of that mm-hmm. yeah anyway you, you guys you guys got it um, everyone's br- bringing arguments that the innocent guy maybe one of one someone in the audience or someone like us is part of a major scam or, or criminal activity 
Now, we know that we are innocent. Now, we know for a fact that we had nothing to do with something like you know, the Punjab bank scam or something to do with helping Vijay Malaya escape the country and uh, default on his loans. We know for a fact that we have nothing to do with that. I like the examples you're taking. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, uh, we know for a fact that we are innocent. And there are all these arguments that are presented forward. Alvin Plantinga goes along to, uh, to say that, let's assume that you have this properly basic belief. Okay, belief that you are rational in holding, that you are holding on to something like our innocence. Um, that we know for a fact that we are innocent. And there are all these defeaters that are presented forward. He says that in certain situations, the original belief could in turn be a defeater of the defeater itself. So you have belief A, and there are defeaters of that belief. And like I mentioned, defeaters of that belief would be something that is com- that is coming along to disprove that belief or show that yeah. belief false. Planning says that there are certain situations when that original belief A is powerful enough to overturn the defeater. So you don't need something else. So going back to example of the the logical problem of evil, you don't need a free will defense to come along and defeat the logical problem of evil. What planning says is that that original belief could be powerful enough to defeat the defeater itself. And here's what I mean. I know the fact that I am innocent. Like I have nothing to do with the Punjab uh, National Bank scam. You, also, you are also saying... You're also innocent. I hope so. I hope so. That you, I hope that you have nothing to do with that <laughs> bank scam. But <laughs> so, so in that instance, if someone comes along and presents bank documents and statements and CCTV footage, I know that none of that makes sense. I mean, think about ourselves in that situation. We know that, that none of that makes sense. So in that instance, I do not have to give up belief of my innocence, even if there are so many arguments out there. Because the fact that I am innocent is something that is so self-evident to me such that it is capable to defeat all other arguments presented against my yeah. innocence. So, in yeah, I'd be thinking that, okay, all... where is this person coming who looks like me and who has the same name like me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> who has the same amount of hair like me, who barely goes out to get a haircut, right? Totally That's identical. What you think, right? I had an identical <laughs> twin. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, in that instance, Pladinger, Pladinger uses this very example of a person in court. He says that in that instance, we are justified, we are rational in believing, in continuing to believe in our innocence, even if there are so many arguments and allegations presented against us. So that was very interesting to note that it's it's sort of like we are believing in spite of the evidence. To the outside world, that's what it's looking like. They would still ask, how yeah. are you still saying that you're innocent? Look at all the evidence that they're presenting. I went to, I came to mm. the court with you. I saw all the evidence that the prosecutors were presenting and yet you're saying you're still innocent. That is just absurd. How can you claim that? But for us, that is totally rational because we know as a properly basic foundational knowledge that we are innocent and therefore yeah. the power of that that uh, inherent belief that it's so powerful that it can defeat all other challenges brought towards it. And planning it goes along to say that our encounter with God can be that foundational through the inner of the Holy Spirit, through the interaction, mm. under specific circumstances, such that it is a properly basic belief, such that it could, it is powerful enough to defeat arguments presented against the belief. And uh, that's pretty interesting to note, um, especially in the context mm. of someone like, you know, someone who is, off, uh, who is far off, you know, you know like, like in a jungle, deserted place, who doesn't come across any particular arguments and as such, but um, he has that direct encounter with, with God. You know, in spite of these arguments out there, he still knows for a fact that he has experienced the presence of Holy Spirit. He has experienced that encounter with God that he can't explain away in any other sense. It's not a random experience that he has. Like I said, there are specific circumstances that have been met in, in the process of experiencing it. So right. even in the face of these arguments or challenges and defeaters of that belief, his uh, belief could be properly basic such that it could defeat these other challenges. So that's something very interesting to note about the whole notion of uh, properly basic belief and I, I think we are coming to the to the end of this episode yeah. so if you start I just want to add a small thing next topic yeah go ahead yeah uh, so basically like you know I don't want you guys to get a wrong picture about uh, arguments so if we continue on the same example uh, okay everyone in the court is 
uh, providing false evidence that uh, I am a criminal. But then normally what happens, even the criminal has an op- has a chance, you know, to go out and collect evidence of his innocence. So if one of the evidence becomes false, there are other other evidence which are true. So similarly, in uh, when we talk about Christianity, uh, it's not that only properly basic belief, only the inner witness of the Holy Spirit uh, is important and that's it. Even the arguments play an important role. They are not useless. They also have an important yeah. role. And we have covered that in the previous episodes. I think uh, you have to go back to... Uh, Go back by two episodes back. Okay, two episodes back. Episode fifty four, I guess. Yes, yes. And we spoke about the effectiveness of arguments. They are really important. So make sure to check out that uh, episode as well. And uh, yeah, and uh, what I'll do is I'll just read off that uh, passage that Dr. Craig notes about when he's talking about all of this when he concludes this passage. So I think it will it will clear up to the audience what's happening here. So doctor, so uh, he's he's writing that the belief that he did not commit the crime intrinsically defeats the defeaters brought against it by the evidence. Plantinga makes the theological application by suggesting that belief in God may similarly intrinsically defeat all the defeaters uh, brought against it. Plantinga suggests that the mechanisms which could produce so powerful a warrant for belief, a warrant as in a justification um, or a rational basis for the belief in God are the implanted natural sense of the divine, Calvin's senses divinitatus, strengthened and accentuated by the testimony of the Holy Spirit. So that is what Plantinga is going all about. He's saying that the, the very notion that I am innocent, it's so implanted in me, it's so powerful that I don't, I don't, I don't have to give up my belief in innocence. In the same way, the, the experience that we have with the Holy Spirit, and it, like I said, this is connected to what Calvin said, that we have the inner ability to ability to uh, to uh, to grasp the divine and Srikanth's testimony is apt here I mean, he's the person who hated Christianity but at that moment in time you know he's he's holding on to deep Christian doctrines of being a sinner and needing Christ you yes. know it's it's very unique that someone who has hated Christianity all over you know all throughout his life suddenly comes to grasp yeah. in a mere matter of moments deep Christian truth so in that same sense we have that inner ability that inner capacity the inner man's capacity the capacity of the spiritual man to engage with the divine, what Calvin calls as sensus divinitatis. So maybe he's using this Latin sense of, you know, our sense of the divine. Um, so the so Platinum goes on to say that our inner witness the, that we feel of the Holy Spirit could be the one that accentuates, that strengthens that encounter that we have with God. In the same way that we know for a fact that we are innocent, in the same way that we know for a fact that uh, we have encountered God. So this doesn't, this doesn't sort of like shift arguments to the side. This doesn't say that you don't need arguments. But first and foremost, we see that a Christian is double warranted. So why is a Christian justified in believing that God exists? Not only does he have, does he have arguments that point towards God's existence, but he also has the self-authenticating inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That is as powerful as our inner conviction that, you know, that I'm innocent or that I exist or that um, I, uh, I, I am Jacob or you know all of those foundational beliefs that we have mm-hmm. so that's the whole point and maybe we'll come yeah. back and look at the next episode and touch upon on how arguments fit into uh, fit into the self-authenticating of the Holy Spirit self-authenticating witness of the Holy Spirit and like I said Pierce the, last episode, the second last episode that we talked on the how effective are arguments you make a very specific point on yes. why we still need arguments so I think this is a pr- perfect place for us to um, put a full stop or maybe a coma we, yeah. haven't, we haven't stopped it we, it's a coma for this topic yeah definitely maybe maybe it's just a stop of a, of a bullet point or a paragraph and we'll be starting off yeah, with the next uh, one no no, no. The, com- the, com- the coma was perfectly fine you didn't <laughs> have to make it a bullet point or a paragraph the okay. coma was coma made sense oh a semicolon there you go there's cool. a full stop and a coma yeah. semicolon there you go no all right, all yeah, right. There you go. so yeah thank you guys for tuning in and uh, I'm sure that you guys are enjoying these episodes on natural theology and i'm sure that you know you don't want your friends to miss out on these so make sure to share it with your friends it doesn't take a lot of time or effort you just have to click on your screen and uh, make sure to like and subscribe our channel follow us on social media so that you stay updated on our latest content and uh, if you want you can even subscribe for our newsletter we'll uh, give the link in the description 
and uh, you'll get monthly updates and buy uh, monthly updates as well so that's it from us yeah. right and i mean, uh, st- st- I mean st- stay subscribed yeah. we have three book giveaways coming up coming yes, up yes. so definitely stay subscribed on instagram and facebook yeah that's pretty exciting right and uh, yeah one more reminder about speak pipe okay so Thanks. make sure to make use of it and uh, yeah i think that's it from our side see you in the next one